Hello, this is Jean Marie Ward for BuzzyMultimedia.com. I'm reporting to you today from DragonCon, and with me is best selling author Jody Lynn Nye, who's written over 38 novels, more than 100 short stories, and has just recently released her new science fiction novel, View from the Imperium, featuring Lieutenant Thomas Canago and Parsons, his very long suffering aide de camp. Welcome, Jody. Thank you. Okay. Um, what inspired you to send Bertie Wooster and Jeeves into space? I love space opera. It is so much fun to read and to write that I wanted to participate in it, but really I haven't seen anything like uh, aristocrats in space, not, not since Retief or Flandry, and certainly no one doing it in a humorous way, which is something I love to do. Mm -hmm. love writing crazy humor. And the Jeeves and Wooster uh, antecedents have, have many offspring, and I'm, I'm very pleased to uh, have, have latched onto the family tree. Lord Peter Whimsey and the inimitable Bun Bunter, and uh, Lyman, Dorothy Dunnett's uh, very troubled young man, and his wonderful mother, who is very much like Honoria Lucasta. Mm -hmm. So it seemed to me that I had a couple of wonderful character types just waiting to go into space and, and see exciting new people and get into trouble in entirely new ways. One of the things that struck me was how much they resembled uh, Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry's uh, Bertie Wooster and Jeeves. Was that intentional? No. In fact, they were meant to resemble Jeeves and Wooster in the books. It so happens that Fry and Laurie are exceptionally wonderful actors, and they re resemble the Wooster and Jeeves in the book. Well, it, I really, really enjoyed what I've read so far, and I've been using it as my airplane book uh, and a lot of airplane time for Dragon Con. Mm -hmm. And the dialogue sounds so much like Wodehouse. I could really hear it coming out of the great portrayers of... Uh, Jeeves and Wooster like Fry and Laurie. Oh, thank you. That's so great. it was a lot of fun. Do you have any more adventures planned for these guys? Oh, I do. I do. I've got at least a couple. Uh, wait until you see what Bertie's uh, new hobbies are. Oh. Thomas's. <laughs> I am almost afraid to ask, but I will. <laughs> Can you tell us? Well, um, I'm not going to tell you yet. I have to Oh, you're I cruel. To, I'm sorry. I have to tell my publisher first. You're so cruel. But that's that's okay. But I, I love I love Thomas. I love his family. I love his crazy friends. And I can't wait to get back to what he was doing. I, I have been starting to write the next two books in bits as I as I go along, as I think of something. Something will strike me and I'll start laughing and then I'll realize that I must open the file and get back to it. Oh, that's always the best way. When they when you find yourself laughing mm -hmm. at something, you know that everybody else will be laughing too. But you don't just write your own Jody Lynn Nye books, which are wonderful. You're a famous uh, collaborator and co-writer for a number of people, Anne McCaffrey, the late Robert Asprin. And I, you had started a number of series with Bob Asprin, uh, including the myth books mm -hmm. and the dragon books. Right. And I seem to recall reading that you will be continuing some of those series? Yes, indeed. Okay. In fact, the third dragon's book is by me. Yes. And the next Myth Adventures book is already in the publisher's hands. It's supposed to come out in December, but I haven't got a cover yet. Oh, okay. And I'm working on another Dragon's book, and there's yet another Myth Adventures under contract. Great. The Myth Adventures that's coming out in December, do you have a title for it? Myth Quoted. Myth Quoted? Mm -hmm. Uh oh, what do we have to <laughs> look forward to there? <laughs> or can you well, say anything? Well, there's an election going on in the uh, dimension of Tippecanoe. Mm hmm. And it has been not taking place for five long years. Much like the endless last presidential campaign, which started, I think, before the previous uh, president had even taken office, as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. Five long years of campaign posters and rallies and protests, and nobody will go ahead and name a date. So it's up to Myth Inc. to make it happen. And it, the timing couldn't be better because uh, January 2012 kicks off election season. 
Yes, it did. You you think it hasn't started already? I live in Chicago. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's always election time in Chicago. Uh, and on top of all this writing you're doing, because we have just listed three different series that you're working on, you've added teaching to your resume. I understand that you uh, are doing a writer's workshop here at DragonCon. That's right. And today you've had your first class. How'd it go? Well, two people left sick. Uh, no, it, it, that had nothing to do with the contestants. <laughs> it was bad luck for both of them. Uh -huh. But I had 19 people. And it's a great group. Mm -hmm. They're they're a lot of fun. They're really willing to get into it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come out of it with. How did you uh, wind up teaching here at DragonCon? Well, I've I've done a lot of writers panels. I've, I've done various kinds of workshops. Uh, I was I was asked by the administration of the convention oh, to do this. That's very good. Mm -hmm. I, I'm amazed at how much um, the how-to aspect of writing has expanded at Dragon Con since I first came here about 14 years ago. Yeah. Um, they are a very writer-friendly con and a very new writer-friendly con, mm -hmm. in my experience. And I think that's a great thing. You have been named guest of honor at a convention in my neck of the woods, Balticon, which mm -hmm. will be held outside of Baltimore in May 2012. That's right. Labor, uh, Memorial Day. Memorial weekend. Day in 2012. Mm -hmm. And I have never had the chance to ask this question of anybody before because I've never known a guest of honor before they were a guest of honor. What goes into the ramp up to be a guest of honor at a major convention like Balticon? Well, they ask you for a bio and a bibliography and a, and a picture, as, as they might for, for any other guest. But they begin to frame certain aspects of the convention around the things that, they, that would be associated with that guest. One of the other things that I'm doing, by the way, is writing a column with my husband, Bill Fawcett, for the Science Fiction Writers of America Bulletin, mm -hmm. the, the magazine, on which conventions are good for writers to go to. Mm -hmm. So I've already written an article on how to be a good literary guest. Oh, cool. As and well as uh, a couple of others. So. I, I have seen and talked to a lot of uh, con runners, as, they, as some of them call themselves, people who are setting up conventions and what they go through for their choices of guests and uh, what aspects of a guest's uh, material they, they lend the convention to. Uh, WindyCon a couple of years ago had John Ringo as their guest. It was military science fiction WindyCon. They've had a steampunk convention. They've had a uh, fairies and, and we folk uh, kind of convention. So I expect Balticon probably will have a few things about humorous fantasy mm -hmm. and, and your, science fiction. Your muse is so comic. It's wonderful. I, I do enjoy it. Um, I like to laugh, I, I confess. My, my muse always has a custard pie. <laughs> ah! Or not a lemon marengo. Oh, <laughs> it depends on whether you want to do the meringue oh. with the meringue and the meringue. Oh, and well, only if you're Ferengi can you do the meringue. That's true. Mm -hmm. You're uh, going to get the lobes for it. <laughs> oh. oh, dear, we could be punning all night. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Let's talk about travel for a minute. Uh, one of the perks one would think about being a writer is you get to go places for research. Mm -hmm. Are you planning any good research trips in the near future? Oh, all my trips are research trips. I, I say this not just to quote Dave Berry, uh, because it's true, but also to satisfy IRS regulations. But I love to travel. I love to go to wonderful, uh, interesting historical places and take a, a good look at the way that the cultures existed and what, what artifacts we have and what wild guesses and educated guesses we've made. Uh, some years ago, we went to Egypt. My husband, myself, my friend Susan Sizemore, who's also a wonderful author, and mm -hmm. her friend Jane Koffenberg, and we sailed along the Nile, which was an awe-inspiring experience, just watching Egypt go by. Mm -hmm. But it also gave us such food for thought that I've written a few short stories, and I used what I learned about uh, the dynasties to develop uh, one of the Myth Adventures books, as a matter of fact, among other things. Um, Myth Fortunes is set in a kind of Egyptian uh, dimension, mm -hmm. 
and it's uh, full of re really hideous puns based upon Egypt, Egyptian culture. That's scary. <laughs> that is it so, was so scary. Much fun. <laughs> But the, the the wonderful meat was there. You know, all I had to do was was just enjoy it. Yes, you've also uh, used libraries famously in your fiction that you have traveled to see. I believe you used uh, a library in Oxford, if I got that right, or yes, one as a matter of fact, I, I did uh, the Bodleian Library, mm -hmm. the ever popular, famous, wonderful Bodleian Library, which mm -hmm. turned out to be a, even more fun than I thought it would be. Oh, cool! Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yes, you really do use your trips for, oh, and I'm do. not just saying that for IRS purposes, but mm -hmm. you do see them in the books. Okay, I think we've covered just about everything. Is there anything I've missed you'd like to talk about? Well, I'm here at a convention, and as you say, you wanted to touch upon what makes uh, a convention guest of honor, mm -hmm. but what makes a great convention are the people who come to it. Mm -hmm. You get some really lively intelligences here, and you get people who are willing to go a little bit outside of their comfort zone because they're among friends. Mm -hmm. This is an environment which allows people to really reach out and, and pretend a little bit and have a little fun that they would never dare to do at home. Mm -hmm. It's a safe place. It's a place where people who are mm, maybe not terribly well socialized get a chance to sort of rub off the rough edges among friends. Mm -hmm. And it's a place where exciting ideas come up and get discussed. I have sat in panels hosted by scientists. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've sat in slideshows from NASA. I listened to Dr. Robert Forward talk about um, his theories on why we'll never have faster than light drive, which disappoints me hugely, of course. But I go home full of ideas, and I go home having met really wonderful people. And there are more good people here than troublemakers or, or problems, because everybody wants to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And it's a very cooperative group. Everybody wants to be here. That's what yes. I love about a con, is that it is a gathering mm -hmm. where everybody wants to be here and have a good time, and I think that reflects in what happens at a convention. And there's a lot of insane creativity. Last year I was admiring the uh, Hulk costumes. Mm -hmm. And there was somebody dressed as Alice Cooper in Wonderland. Oh! That was so wonderful. Yeah. I just couldn't believe it. And another one of my favorites, of all things, there was a woman dressed in the Carol Burnett uh, Gone with the Wind dress, complete with the curtain rod a couple of years ago, I just about died laughing. And I was so pleased that she knew the line. Mm -hmm. I just saw it in the window, and I just <laughs> had to have it. <laughs> I can't think of a better way to close the interview. Thank you so much, Thank you Jody. very much. And thank you, viewers, from BuzzyMultimedia.com.